Okay, what I want to talk about today is actually a tool set to evaluate resilience strategies, specifically for networks, and we consider networks as well as uh, part of the critical infrastructure, and I think they're becoming more so. This is work in collaboration with uh, people from Brazil and Austria and Australia as well, so we are fairly international on that one. Uh, just a brief outline, I'll give an introduction into network resilience, the motivation for the work, uh, then go a bit more into details about the simulator, what we want to achieve and uh, finish off with some case studies and concluding remarks we have done. So what is network resilience? We see network resilience very much as uh, basically a core component for ensuring that our daily life keeps functioning nowadays. We all communicate. And the resilience is a key property of the networks. Now, fortunately enough, networks have always been created with resilience in mind. So if you think about the internet, uh, it can withstand almost anything. However, there are nowadays malware and attacks happening that um, we try to remediate much earlier than just leave it into the inbuilt properties of the internet and the protocols there themselves. So what are the different uh, challenges we are dealing with? There's first of all the malicious attacks, that's what everybody thinks of uh, straight away. But you also get operational overload. So uh, if an event happens, very often you end up then to, to see a flash crowd around specific information sources, which very often actually do not in a, uh, bring down the, the actual web server themselves, but it can bring down the network environment around it. Uh, what we've seen in 7.7, it wasn't actually that uh, the BBC service uh, stopped responding, it was the network there. Um, however, what we usually don't talk about that much is, uh, for instance, misconfiguration and equipment failure. That fairly often still happens. Uh, it has the same impact, uh, but of course the source is different on that one. When we initially started off this work, we developed a, a concept. We love frameworks in academia, uh, and we love uh, short acronyms that look scientific. So we have a, a real-time control loop here, which uh, you have to defend against uh, the challenge first, but alongside that, actually, you first need uh, to be able to detect it. So that's why you have a component that detects it. And then you, you, you try to remediate against your challenge once you have basically established what it is all about. And then there is the recovery phase once the challenge is over. Uh, out of bounds, in an offline loop, you've got the diagnose and a refine strategy here. So you want to get to the bottom of what the challenge really caused initially and then how you can deal with it in future better uh, than you, you have done so in, in, in the past. Initially, people compared this to a castle and I was never very happy with the analogy of a castle because castles, uh, for, for some reasons, are just there as ornaments and not really as defense anymore. It's the same here because uh, they're just not dynamic enough. If you build your walls, I mean, in the SCADA systems, they've been built 25, uh, 30 years ago. Uh, there are new challenges that easily can overcome them. So we need actually to, to have something that is more dynamic. And uh, in our case, we are working with policy-based resilience strategies. So what we have here is that the resilience strategy itself uh, decouples, is decoupled from the mechanisms. And then you have criteria uh, uh, requirements, you've got uh, changes here over time uh, in the operational context depending on w uh, where you're operating in, and then also depending on the new types of challenges you see. Uh, so uh, I think that almost uh, covers uh, the motivation already as well. What you see is that you've got different mechanisms and services. The specified event-driven policies on that one, which basically give us the possibility to, to react on uh, specific event and then uh, from there you can then also go more automatically into the defense and into um, the resilience strategies you use. Uh, in order to be able to do that however the initial challenge is how can you evaluate your resilience strategies you're developing. Uh, it's time consuming and it's costly um, 
The one thing which is most critical is, of course, our networks are in operations and they're also 24-7. We are terribly upset this we, uh, if they go down. Um, so you can't really try it on a live network. If you try it in a, in a testbed setup, the testbed is also of a fairly limited scale. So uh, what we have then developed basically is a tool set which we integrate where we integrate simulation and uh, the policy-based resilient strategies with the idea then to actually, after they have been evaluated, to, uh, to bring them out into a testbed environment and then from there into the live environment. So that's the original idea. Uh, what we started off with is a set of uh, strategies that are based on policies. We use the policy-based uh, Ponder 2 framework as the uh, policy simulator and we'll use uh, uh, a network simulator at the back end. So uh, the simulation based policies are strategies that help us to actually first of all discover challenges and then also classify these challenges and uh, with a targeted reaction to actually act on, on, on them and, and remediate against them. So first things we've been looking into here is actually uh, indicators for challenges. So a high link utilization is always a good indicator to start off with. Not for everything, but uh, uh, in the initial attack. Uh, it can be then a, a malicious attack, it can be equipment failures, it can be uh, having other causes as well. We also look at different kinds, different signs of, of a change in behavior of your traffic that not necessarily expresses itself initially in high link utilization. Uh, okay, so what we have done here is then an integration of the policy platform and the policy platform can also be integrated then into the modules you would uh, have residing alongside your network and the network simulator here. So as the network simulator um, develops, we have used, hang on, We've used Omnet++ actually as our, our base network simulators. We could have other simulators. We started off with other ones, but we discovered that Omnet gives us actually most of what we want. Uh, so within Omnet and the connection with Pondo2, we then realized the resilience mechanisms instrumented as objects in the simulation themselves. Uh, we translate the observed events from the simulation into the policy framework and then from there we then basically act on the events we see in the simulating environment and we'll see in a few examples how that works. So that's the overall setup as we have got it in the m at the moment. Uh, I will not talk to you through uh, all of that, it just shows some of the complexity we're dealing with. So we've got the Ponder2 platform here with the mechanism lookup and the event broker. Uh, then here, that's the core uh, setup of the Mechanism Explorer, and then we've got the Omnet Simulator platform down here, from which we then get basically through uh, the event publisher, the events into the, uh, the Ponder platform, and they're reacted upon then uh, through the challenge reconfiguration policy repository that uh, also interacts here with the server. Uh, I think a standard setup, um, not, in, 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 not entirely simple, but uh, it's very functional and working. So after we actually created the whole thing, we looked at different challenges which we would want to remediate against. The first one we looked at is a DDoS attack. DDoS attacks are very attractive because uh, they're highly publicized. Uh, there are um, obvious in a sense that when they happened, everybody can see that the service is actually affected and is going down. Um, so what we have done here, now in this example, we had 14 uh, STAPS autonomous systems. Uh, we run 39 DDoS somnis in the, in the system, and we had a, a simulation of 1,005 hosts uh, that generated background traffic in order to make it look real. What you can see here now, basically, what happens at point one, the DDoS attack starts. At point two, uh, we have noticed that there has been a considerable change in traffic. And at that stage, we then basically put a rate limiter 
into onto the entire link that is affected by it. That's what you would do anyway. That's what anybody managing networks would do. However, we, we don't want to stop here because um, ultimately we want to make sure that the service is upheld while we actually remediate against the challenge. So what we do then is we, d we identify uh, what the wic who, uh, who the victim is and then limit the traffic just towards the victim rather than um, for the entire link here. Now you could of course say, now the, the attacker has exactly achieved what they wanted to, that is make ser the service unavailable for, um, for the users of a, of a specific basically service here. So in that time period, however, what we, what we do is we analyze further where the attacks uh, are coming from, which are the offending flows. And what you can see then here at time uh, four is that we only start limiting at that time then the flows that are offending and not all flows that go to a certain victim or we don't rate limit the flows to a certain victim. After further analysis and after we've classified all flows successfully in five basically we are now able to stop all the flows that are belonging to the uh, DDoS zombies and let those flows fro uh, through that uh, carry the legitimate traffic to all the other users on the network and of course also to the service we had initially. So that, that was the first example we worked with for our resilient simulator here. Yeah? Uh, a second example we had was actually bomb uh, detection and mitigation. Now they are less obvious. What we do here is actually um, we, we look at certain behavior and here in this example we looked actually at the slammer warm and we looked at the scanner be scanning behavior. What that gives you then is a, um, a difference in entropy within your, uh, within your traffic and because of that we can then determine okay there is currently um, warm scanning going on despite the fact that we that much of an increase of the original uh, traffic volume here. So we are acting on entropy changes rather than on volume based changes. The two examples basically show that we can do then uh, use different features in order to, uh, to use them within the policy uh, simulator in order to also then act on them if within the remediation. So, uh, so it is not just volume based, it can be any other traffic feature you can capture, you can analyze, and you can conclusively uh, basically then uh, have certain events based on that will help you to, to remediate uh, against what's going on. Okay, uh, so we are almost at the end of the talk. As, a, as concluding remarks, so what we see as main contribution of this work basically is that we can provide an extensible tool set for, uh, to model resilient strategies, which we think is necessary uh, to test them out before you can actually make them live. Uh, what we have done helps us to, to basically analyze range of anomalies offline and attack behaviors before we then can uh, develop the remediation strategy and then also bring it online at the later stage. So it permits an evaluation of the strategy to detect and mitigate security threats uh, before you then eventually bring it into the live system. What are the limitations? The limitations are, as with all simulating environment, that we of course have to abstract many details for, of real implementation. What we have, for instance, been experimenting with is uh, trying to implement real-world network scenarios within the simulator. So one of the students here, he's implemented the campus network in the simulator and then we tested the remediation strategies um, here and, and saw how effective they are and we actually saw some changes uh, which we didn't expect because the campus network has certain features that you don't have in a, in a more wide-scale network. So we're still kind of analyzing uh, what, what has been going on there. Maybe it was also a, a, a mistake in the implementation, uh, as it might be the case if you have a student working for 20 weeks and not uh, sometimes getting things wrong. But it was a very good work, I have to say. Uh, 
then also the the fidelity on, uh, for modeling hosts and other components of course um, that might be wrong that's just what I've been saying okay so what's our further plans we actually try to uh, integrate the tool set with physical network components um, to get away a bit of uh, of these aspects here and then also uh, to build up a hybrid emulation testbed as part of our future work okay and i think i'm just finished in time thanks for the attention Talk.